New Year, new LEGO Speed Champions, same old me. Hi, I'm Josh from Josh Build Stuff. Today, the stuff we built were new LEGO Speed Champions for 2024. Forgive the condition of these boxes, they were consecutively run over by each of the cars we're talking about today, which are the Ford Mustang Dark Horse, the Audi S1 e-tron Quattro, the 2023 McLaren Formula One car, and the BMW M4 GT3 and BMW M Hybrid V8 cars. The big question on everyone's mind, are these sets that's good? The easy answer? Yes, obviously they are. I'm extremely biased though. The actual big question, is this Speed Champions Wave better than the previous one? No, honestly, I don't think so. But again, it's all subjective. If you like this kind of car better than the last bunch of cars, then you would like this wave better. What I'm saying is that I'm striving for subjectivity. So in today's video, we are going to talk about each of these sets individually, and I'm going to try to say something good and something bad about each of these sets. Speaking to the overall wave, four sets, five cars, I think is decent, a positive about it. it they're Speed Champions cars. So they're always good. They're always detailed. They always look really cool, especially when displayed all next to each other like this. A negative of these and a lot of Speed Champion sets Stickers. These cars have a bunch of stickers. I'm only going to say this once and then probably a whole bunch more times after this. Yes, the stickers are a negative of these sets. But yes, that's worth overlooking in order to get to the beautiful sets beneath those stickers. Another negative, if I may quote an excerpt from the Josh Build Stuff Household Gazette. When polled, one out of one wives in this house said, each of those cars cost how much? Because the individual sets have increased in price. It's like $27 for one car. It's $45 for the two pack. That is over a 50% price increase from what these cars would have cost just a few years ago. That being said, let's look at these one by one until we get to the two pack. Let's start with the Ford Mustang Dark Horse. Ooh, moody lighting. I feel like I'm in a poorly lit barn. Let's actually talk about this minifigure first because who cares about viewer retention anyway? This minifigure is wearing like a cool branded hoodie has cool red hair and looks like every single Mustang owner that I have ever met in real life. Which actually includes my real life brother. I call him brother build stuff even though he asks me not to, but he has actual red hair and I know what you're thinking. Don't worry, we made fun of him for it plenty. As for this Mustang, it's based on the like new variant of the Dark Horse Mustang, which is as far as I can tell, like other variants of modern day Mustangs, but slightly more expensive and got a cool blue paint job going on. Hence the blue paint job, it's accurate on the Speed Champions car. The bad about this set, stickers. Actually, those aren't bad in this case. The bad about this set, it's a Mustang. I'm kidding. This is actually one of the more solid builds in this Speed Champions wave, and I say that literally and figuratively because I think the Mustang has a slightly simpler shape to the actual car that lends itself slightly better to this scale of build, and they've even managed to capture some cool Mustang-ish details, especially in that rear and front end. The little engine compartment's even popping up a little bit. Overall, I think this is one of the more solid builds in this wave, even though, as you can tell, I'm not the biggest Mustang fan. I do think there's something missing from this set. It's that 24% um, that APR that you got when you just returned from deployment and decided to buy yourself a brand new Mustang. I'm only making that joke because that is literally exactly what my actual brother did. Oorah, go Marines, thank you for your service and thank you for these sweet boots and this cool knife. Most of what I say here isn't true. My brother was an actual Marine and I am very proud of him for it. I'm not allowed to salute, I'm sorry. I know what you're thinking, what a knob. I couldn't agree more. Legos recolored their microphone piece to that matching blue color, which is actually like a, a trait of the real Mustang car, so it's cool that they worked it into here. And as long as we're talking about the interior, I like the fact that while you're driving a Mustang Dark Horse, you can be constantly reminded of your bad decisions by reading that you are now driving a Mustang Dark Horse on your dashboard. Realistically though, if you are a Mustang fan, one, I apologize, and two, you need to buy the Speed Champion set because this is realistically the only modern era Mustang we are going to get in Speed Champion scale because I don't think they look different enough at their current production rate to merit making more than one of those. It's like watching the Titanic with your mom. Once is enough. One final positive for this car and others in this wave, the windshields have a very dark tint to them now, which is exactly what I would want if I was driving a real Mustang because I wouldn't want to be seen driving a real Mustang. So you tell me yay or nay on this car, my final honest thought, this is actually a really good model. Next but not least is the Audi S1 e-tron Quattro. Again, starting with the minifigure. If his mini shades of gray are any indication, then I have no opinion on this minifigure, which can be shared in mixed company. Honestly, he's gray. 
that's it. I said gray, not great. That was intentional. He's got an Audi racing suit on, as can be expected. But no one is buying Speed Champion sets for minifigures, unless you count the many figures we're spending on single car sets. Again, this is another $27 vehicle. I love when Speed Champions does this, where the actual set is based on a real existing car in the real world. This one is based on an actual Audi rally car. The real car was inspired by the Pikes Peak 1987 Audi Sport Quattro. Shout out to Carlos Sainz Sr., rally car racing champion, and Carlos Sainz Jr., recent appendix for movie, and recent winner of the Australian Grand Prix. Go Ferrari. Something I've learned, if you want Lego to make your car, pay them a bunch of money, but also make it an e-tron, because this, once again, it's electric. Boogie, woogie, woogie, woogie. A negative about this set. Stickers. This set has even more than the last set, but not as many as some upcoming sets, if you would believe it. It's got a lot. But again, it's a rally car. What do you expect? It does have some printed pieces like the printed windscreen. However, I've said it before, the printed windscreen doesn't match the surrounding stickers. Positives, as with a lot of these sets, some very cool building techniques like the front and rear of this car. There are also some new pieces that were introduced across this wave, which were used very nicely here. And one of my favorite parts about this set is the quote the Ninja Turtles and 14th century German mathematician Christoph Rudloff, it is radical in a figurative and literal sense. It looks very cool, but also it looks very different, very radical, if you would. The real car stands out, and so does the Speed Champions car with that really extended front end and crazy exaggerated rear wing area. The whole thing looks very distinct because the real car looks very distinct. And so from a design perspective, this is one of my favorite vehicles in this wave. And if you have a chance to look at real videos of the real car, then it's very cool. And I would do so. It's like a Hunatron car rest in peace Ken Block, but the real car is very cool and I think it's very coolly translated to a Speed Champion set. Cool being a pun because this set is often seen driving in the snow. Oh, I love papayas. This is the LEGO Speed Champions 2023 McLaren F1 car. But first, let's play everyone's favorite game show. Who's that minifigure? If you said, I don't know, you would be correct. Yeah, I'm excited that LEGO got another officially licensed F1 set, but they didn't get the license for the likeness of an official F1 driver, being Lando Norris or Oscar Piastri, and so instead what we get is generic McLaren F1 driver number one. But who cares? We get another Formula One Speed Champion set. It goes nicely with our Mercedes Formula One set from a few years ago. However, I said it before, I'll say it again, at the rate that LEGO is giving us these sets, it's going to take us, I don't know, five to ten years to get a complete F1 grid, and at that point we're going to have cars from nine different generations across nine different grid configurations, and that's a small concern. Let's just be excited about the one set that we got right now, which is this one. Negatives about this set. The stickers. What do you expect? It's a sport driven by sponsorships, and so the car is going to be covered in sponsorships. But here's the alternative. Look at the long uh, nose piece of this car. That's a nicely printed piece, isn't it? Except it's orange printing on a black piece, and so it looks grainy and strange and bumpy. That's your alternative if you don't want stickers. So pick the better of the two evils, and I'm gonna pick Mercedes if I'm picking the, no, I'm just, F1's cool though. Sure, it's got a bunch of stickers, but everything else about the car is really cool. I think it's an improvement over the last Speed Champions Formula One set that we got, but it's also a very different design from the Mercedes. I think it's a little simpler. I think it lends itself better to this scale. I like the shocks made out of the little handled pieces. I think the front and rear wings are well depicted. I like that there's Dualt sponsorships because I like that tool. Some would say I am a tool. Well, that's a different conversation. You got spoons for rear view mirrors and some details depicted with stickers, but look at that very low clearance, Clarence. I think that puts us on a good vector. Victor, do you Roger? Roger? It's very low to the ground. You dig? More positives. Slick tires at a small scale. Absolutely a huge win in this case. And printed officially licensed Pirelli tires. We got the mediums on there now. I think those accent the chrome colors really well. We got that chrome uh, wheel piece that's covering that's accurate to the real car and other chrome sponsorships plastered all over the thing. And overall, I like this car very much. I want to say this is the best car in this wave. So I will. I usually do what I want. It's one of my worst qualities. Is this objectively the best car in this wave? I'm objective, Josh, and I say no. The consensus online seems to be that this build is too simple for adult builders, and yet if you're an F1 fan, this is a must-buy, but there are still too many stickers, but there is still a whole bunch of five-star ratings, so I guess just do what you want. 
Two costume changes for one car is too, too many. I understand that. This is my favorite car, but I also like F1 a lot. So if you're an F1 fan, I do agree that this is a must buy for you. The BMW M4 GT3 and BMW M Hybrid V8 are two of the most included vehicles in this wave. This is the two pack. You get both of these cars for $45, which is somewhat cheaper than the $27 individual price tag. So I'm gonna put that on the positives list for these cars. But once again, let's look at these mini figures. First, we have a girl with a Karen haircut. Let's call her Karen and a man with a receding hairline. Let's call him Josh. I like the complimentary racing suits here, which implies I should say something nice about them, but I once stayed in one of the best Western hotels, which promised a complimentary muffin, and it didn't say a single nice thing about me of significance. So I'm following in its fibrous footsteps and withholding any compliments of my own. I do like the mismatched legs on these figures. They remind me of my friend Eileen, and no one cares about Speed Champion's minifigures, so these are good enough to hide behind a heavily tinted windshield. As for the cars, the positives, say something nice or positive about BMWs. Uh, shoot, let's say that I didn't finish that part of the script and not that that was the only nice thing written about BMWs in the script. I'm only kidding, Germans make great cars. Germans make a lot of great things like pretzels and Christoph Rudloff. Negatives, a lot of stickers. And this time I honestly mean it. There are so many stickers between these two cars. I think it probably doubled the amount of time it took to build these sets just because of the sticker applications. Also, new BMWs have those kidney grills, I think they call them, but I think they need to find a new urologist because those kidneys are looking a little inflamed. Honestly, I do not love that goofy front end look on new BMWs, and I don't think it translates well to the speed champions here. Modern BMWs just end up looking like they got big pairs of sunglasses on the front of their car, which is the perfect time to mention today's sponsor, Shady Rays. You want the front of your car to look as dumb as the front of your face? Get Shady Rays. I'm not actually sponsored by anything who would sponsor this, and I actually likes Shady Rays, they sponsor other things that I'm a fan of. Okay, the M4 GT3, like I said, it's a track only new M4. It costs like half a million dollars. So by comparison, this car is very cheap. On the interior, the passenger is clearly from Central Europe because he's a pole. There's also an Elgato Stream Deck included on the dash, which is great for today's constantly connected youth out there. The M Hybrid V8 comparable to the Porsche Le Mans car we got last year looks great from an aesthetic point of view. BMW describes this car as the dawn of a new era. Personally, I'm still in my Travis Kelsey Taylor Swift era's era, but apparently it's time to move on to the BMW era. This car looks fine for Le Mans cars and Le Mans fans, and I don't mean to discount it, but I'm not an F1 and Le Mans fan, but this cool, long, cool race car looking, it's pretty cool looking. And it's a good thing it's a hybrid because unlike me, the car won't run out of gas most of the way through this review. Blah, 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 stickers, stickers, stickers. Buy these cars if you're a fan of BMWs. My integrity as a reviewer relies solely on my ability to speak my truth. And the truth is, I think all of these cars are honestly worth buying. I think they're all great. If you're a fan of one brand over another, that's fine. But if you're buying every single eight stud wide speed champion set like me, then go out and buy all of these. Yes, they're slightly overpriced. Yes, there are too many stickers. Yes, they also look very cool on a shelf or being displayed along other speed champion sets. So I believe all of these cars are wonderful and worth buying as are you. Wonderful, and don't sell yourself short. That's why you gotta hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed this video. If you didn't, understandable. There was a lot going on here, man. As always, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.